Hello, this is Monkey Games from Scratch. Today we're going to look at isometric maps in tiled. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with the term isometric, basically it's a way of faking three dimensions in two dimensions. There's lots of games made this uh, the format popular going back to uh, the heyday of the 80s and 90s when you had games like XCOM or um, Ultima 7, etc. This perspective of sort of top down, but it's still ultimately a 3D graphic. So here's an example. Um, here is a three-dimensional cube rendered two-dimensionally in an isometric style. And you can see they've just kind of shifted the perspective, so you're looking at it a bit from the top and on an angle. And that's ultimately where your isometric map is going to look at. When we've dealt so far with um, orthographic projection, we've just been dealing with nice squares to put our tiles in. Well, now we're going to be dealing generally with a more diamond-type shape. It's this base that's important. Now, I'm going to leave this image up because it's going to help be helpful for us in a second. Um, now, the next and the key part with any time you're dealing with an isometric map, especially in tile, is you want to have your tile set be very good. And a lot of the ones you can get for free aren't. Um, so there is one of your challenges. Another thing that's out there that's a little tricky is I, um, tiled really wants your tiles to be a consistent size. And a lot of the, the isometric sets, especially the one out there by Kenny NL, um, they're all kinds of different sizes. So you can still work with those in tile, but you're gonna have to not use um, tile sheets. Instead, you would have to use them as uh, individual images and you lose a lot of the alignment stuff. So it's not as fun by any means if you work that way. So ideally what you want is a nice clean tile set where all the tiles fit nicely together. Then they work quite well inside of tile. So in this case, I'm going to use an, uh, a freely available tile set. You can get it here from Open Game Art. It's called Isometric 64 by 64 Medieval Building Tile Set. Um, Open Game Art, completely free site, uh, but you do have to sign up and register to be able to log in and download stuff. And that's what I've done. This is the guy we're going to use right here. So I've gone ahead and downloaded it. Here's the end result. You can see the tiles in action. Uh, but here is, oops, that's not it. Where'd it go? I already closed it. All right. Here is the ultimate tile sheet we are going to be working with. Now, the nice thing here is each one of these tiles, there's no spacing in between them. So this is literally just an array of tiles and each one is 64 by 64 in size. So we got a nice consistent sheet to work with. It's gonna play well with tiled, so we're good to go. So you fire up tile and we're gonna go ahead and create an isometric map. And I'm gonna show you there's two options available. We're only gonna be using one, but I'll show you both of them. So when you create a new map, you come on down here and you switch from um, orthogonal to either isometric or isometric staggered. We're gonna use isometric, but isometric staggered I'll show you first. And there's not a whole lot of difference, but uh, so you set up your, your sizes like normal, your tile sizes like normal, but here is the result of staggered. Basically you end up with a square as your overall map. Um, Whereas isometric, you're going to end up with, as we'll see in a second, a diamond. And really, that's the only major difference, other than uh, it can affect the math a little bit. It affects how your overflow works, um, so how clipping off the edge of your game is going to work, etc. Uh, but otherwise, there's not a huge difference between staggered and straight isometric. Now, here is the important part, and here is the thing that is going to be of some challenge to you on a mental level, um, is this part here, our tile size. So as I said, in this when I showed you this image here, each one of these is 64 by 64 in size. But the kicker is when we're creating our map here, so our map tile size. So when we input our tile sheet, our tile size is going to be 64 by 64. But coming in, our tile size is actually going to be 64 by 32 height. And, and this is all down to uh, your ratio of width to height on that you your artist is using for your tile set. So if you don't use a two to one, it's gonna change the number of the ratio between your width and your height here. But the key is, where's this number coming from? If our tile is um, 64 by 64, why the hell isn't our tile size 64 by 64? And the kicker is, here's one of those things with isometric, is the graphic itself bleeds outside of its tile space. It actually overlaps neighboring pixels and such. So there's where it's different from um, an orthographic projection. An orthographic projection fits in its box for the most part, and that's that. Where isometric tiles actually kind of overhang each other. And that's part of the, uh, the illusion of 3D here. So where are we getting this? Um, why is the height half of its height? Well, that's where this, this handy cube comes in handy. So you notice here is 
your say let's say this was 64 by 64 64 by 64 what we're actually interested in is the base of the tile so like think of it like lego pieces you only care about the bottom bit that sticks into another piece the only dimension that matters is that one and in that case you look in this is your tiles base right so on a two to one projection you only really so your width is still fully your width but your height is literally half height so that is why we're, we're just defining in the map, we're, just, we're defining the size of this triangle on the map, not the entire tile, okay? And this translates into um, the tile sets too. We're defining this size, so just a floor potentially, not an entire tile. And you'll see how this works in a second. So that's why we've done that, um, why our height is half the height of our width. We'll just go ahead and create it. Uh, the other thing of importance here is rendering order. By default, this should be fine, and I'll describe how this works in a second. Um, and here you go. Here's we've created a map. So unlike staggered, it's not kind of a fake square. It's it's a big diamond shape um, map that we're working with. So what you would generally do is have if your map kind of went off for infinity, you would have to clip it off at some point. But that is this is essentially our map now. And now the last thing we got to do is bring in our tile set to work with and just create a new and so here's what i was thinking if you're using the non-grid size tiles you would probably bring them in as a collection of images and place them like you would with the objects in tiled uh, as opposed to taking advantage of the nice easy tile work set so you can work with something like kenny ml's tile but the placement is going to be much more manual in how it's done but in this case since our tile set is a nice grid we can bring it in as base as a tile set image go ahead and download it that's in my downloads folder here it is so in this particular case, we want our tile height to be the full 64 pixels. Uh, there's no transparency color, so we're not setting that. Uh, and there's no spacing or uh, margin between the tiles because they're nicely flush up against each other. So we don't have to set either of those either. So we are done. And there you go. Uh, there is our tile set. Now the trick of using tiles is a matter of an artistic eye. And the truth of the matter is, I don't have it. I suck at this. Uh, but it's a matter of trying to envision things in 3D. And what you might find is that it's easier to work from the top down. Uh, but I'll show you from the bottom up very first. So we're going to have our layer. Um, it will give them names. So bottom top. Well named, eh? Um, so basically top is going to be drawn over top of bottom and we'll start with the bottom the bottom is just going to be um, Here, let's start with a big fill So we just have this nice chunk of brick floor to work with on the ground And now we just want to start adding some height and depth to it So the rest of this is a matter of again having a nice eye for working in fake 3d and again, I don't so I'm gonna make a massive munch of this like I'm gonna be a brutal brutal job here uh, but I will show you making from the bottom up um, and we're just gonna bring in some of these bricks for example oops I'm still in flood fill so we'll go back to stamp so let's say we want a wall it's a matter of just drag your wall out where you want it all right that uh, paste tile is not a good choice so there's your underlying wall now we want to add a door to that wall for example uh, do I have any stone? Yeah, here's a good stone door and you just kind of paint over and now you've got a door in place. And then the next thing is if you've got a top level layer and you want to start putting a roof on it, we just go, oh, crap, I painted that entirely in the top. Okay, I don't like this bottom and I don't like, so let's just, uh, we shall go ahead and remove that layer. So let's start this over again. So add layer, top. Select the bottom, unlike what I did last time. And this time I'm not going to do any bottom because that was really distracting, to be honest. So start off with our wall. Make sure bottom is selected. And let's just put up a wall, like so. All right, so we got our basic shape to work in in 3D. Now your perspective is fixed coming from this way up. Um, so, you know, if we're going to be putting a roof on, we don't really need to define anything in this space here. So there is our base level. Now we want to go ahead and have a door going. So let's add our entrance way. We can add a couple entrances if we want. And then the next thing is you need to make uh, like a roof level. So we're going to switch up to the top level, uh, bring in a couple of roof tiles. Uh, 
Now, you see what happened there? The draw order is drawing this one over that one. So you got it obscured the, um, the front facing there. Now we don't actually want that anyway. So we're gonna to wanna to cover over that. And we can get that using this tile. Oops, this tile. So now we just get our roof in. See, now here's where, again, I am abysmal at thinking in 3D. And all the tiles you need to work with are here. So if we had a corner, uh, we set that corner up there and there should be an opposite to that. I don't know where it is. But I'm not gonna show you me struggling with making things in three dimensions. Cause I, again, I really, really, really suck at thinking in three dimensions, but this is essentially what you do. You start you know, start from your bottom, start drawing your details and you go up and anything that is visually above something else is just in a higher layer. So again, if we wanna do a chimney on top here, so let's say add this chimney. If I click here, obviously not what we want. So in that case, we now know we need Another layer, we should now have dub more top, and boom, your chimney's in. And that's it. It's, it's the same basic process as working uh, layered in orthogonal, but you need to start thinking more three-dimensionally. Now, the nice thing is, whoever creates the tiles that does most of the work for you, but as you saw from my experiences here, I still suck at figuring out what particular tile to put in what particular spot. Um, and again, this is an artistic ability for sure, and it's definitely one that I lack in. So um, for figuring out what pieces are required to make this roof all come together in 3D and look nice, not my forte for sure. Um, it's probably something like this guy. Yeah, there you go. So see, there's how you would close off that and make it look good in a 3D perspective. And I don't, in, I, I don't obviously see it that way that well. So learning to think in an isometric perspective from an artistic point of view is definitely going to be the majority of the skill set here. Uh, but the tools wise, working with tile, very, very simple as we just saw. Um, so more or less, um, you start with your base layers, you start going up, or you could do the exact opposite and start with your top layer, lay down a roof like so, and then go to your bottom layer and put your walls underneath it like so and sometimes you'll find working top down it's probably a lot easier but that is in essence all that's involved in working with isometric tiles very simple um, now on the other hand if you're dealing with um, different perspectives so this this perspective assumes that um, things are going to overwrite other things that's the whole trick of how uh, this roof line works and that's where this value comes in so if you've got, if you're working with a much different uh, perspective uh, than what we're working with here, than the way that these tile sets are drawn, it's possible that you're going to want to change uh, the tile render order. And this is going to determine what draws on top of what. So what's the forefront and what's the background. And the way this works, this naming convention, I believe, I might munch this up a little bit, but I believe right down basically means it travels to the right. So left to right this way. So it goes here and then down and then here, and then down, and then here, and then down. So that means that this tile is drawn, and then this one, and then this one. So that's why this tile is being drawn over top of this one, essentially, because you've got that left to right draw order, and then it, this one's drawn, and then this one's drawn. So that means that this tile will obscure this tile. And you can change this so that it can go um, the opposite direction. So you can go from this way to this way, or you can start at the bottom and go up. And it's just gonna change the way that things overwrite each other. And it's gonna change basically the perspective that you work with and the way that your tile should be designed, etc. So So um, it all comes down to the perspective that you chose is gonna determine the render order of your particular tiles. And the render order is ultimately gonna determine what gets drawn at the front and what gets drawn at the back. Think of it no different than, you know, if you're drawing on a piece of paper, whatever you draw first is traditionally going to be obscured by whatever you draw second. Um, no different here with tiles, it's just you've got extra dimensions to work with. So that's what this tile render ordering op, um, ultimately makes the difference of. And it's going to be determined more or less by your art style than anything else. Uh, so you may not have to change that at all, uh, but that's about that. Staggered will only matter if you're working in a staggered uh, position, which we are not. Um, that's it. So that's pretty much all you need to know about isometric uh, tiles in Tiled. Hope you enjoyed that. See you later. Bye.